Poet Technologies is going to the NASDAQ. That big news was just announced. The company headquartered in Toronto and with offices in the US and Asia is expected to begin trading on the NASDAQ capital market under the ticker symbol POET beginning in a few weeks. To reach the price threshold needed to qualify for the NASDAQ listing and to meet its own post-consolidation price targets, POET is executing a share consolidation or reverse split with a 10 shares for one share ratio. My name is Adrian Bridge-Bassey, a content and communications consultant for POET, as well as an investor in the company. And here with me is POET's CFO, Thomas Micah, to help current and future shareholders understand the news and some of the exciting things happening for the company. Tom, the move to the NASDAQ is perhaps the biggest news in the history of POET. How are you feeling now that it's been made? Well, thanks, Adrian. Well, uh, it's an exciting moment for POET, and it's a little scary for me as Chief Financial Officer. Everyone in the organization is really eager for what is ahead of us. It feels like this is a major step in our progress. You know, we were careful with this decision and listed a subcommittee of the board to look at the landscape of what's going on in the broader investment world and to gauge the opportunities we have. And based on their recommendations, we're making what we believe is the best move for the company because we're going to be able to access more investors in the U.S. market and it'll likely help us in negotiations with customers as well. Uh, absolutely. Now, can you provide some pertinent details of what investors will need to know about what happens to their shares and when the NASDAQ listing will be active? So uh, the fundamental issue is that the value of the shares doesn't change. So uh, the price will be uh, 10 times higher and the amount will be 10 times lower. So only the number of shares that you hold. Um, so that new number should re be reflected in your brokerage accounts as soon as trading begins in the post-consolidated shares. The only shareholders who need to do anything are the registered shareholders, and they're relatively few compared to our, I think, over 12,000 existing shareholders. Um, and they will get a letter from ComputerShare and that will explain exactly what they have to do. So as far as trading is concerned, you're still gonna be able to trade your existing shares on the TSX Venture Exchange. You know, we, we plan to remain on that, on that uh, exchange even when we uh, list on the NASDAQ. And as we've said in the past, we're considering a, an uplist to the Toronto Stock Exchange uh, main board at a future date. So the NASDAQ listing will come after the consolidation. Um, NASDAQ needs the stock to trade on a post-consolidated basis for a minimum of five days. That's called seasoning. But the NASDAQ told us to expect an approval letter and the trading will start within seven to 10 days after we begin trading on a post-consolidated basis on either the venture exchange or the OTC. So when we have more, a more certain date, we'll announce that date. And everyone is looking forward to that uh, for sure. Now, what will the company be doing to support the value for shareholders as it reaches the NASDAQ, as we begin uh, being part of the NASDAQ? Well, first and foremost, it's about being on the NASDAQ. I've spoken to many institutional investors over the years who simply will not invest in OTC and venture exchange traded companies. Many of them can't invest in stocks that trade for less than $5 a share, and brokers can't solicit orders from retail investors on stocks that trade under $5 a share. That's an SEC rule. So this consolidation opens Poet stock up to them. We're expanding our outreach to investors along two fronts. Traditional investor relations, which is geared towards institutional investors, and the second front being social media, which is geared towards retail investors. With traditional IR, we plan to do more, more pay-for-play conferences, banker-supported conferences, and one-on-one -on -one meetings. And in connection with our NASDAQ listing, we've had multiple discussions with banking analysts uh, over the past few months. For social media directed at retail investors, both in Canada and the US, we've contracted with North Equities, which has been really successful at distributing digital content about their clients to a broad audience of investors. Their work will put Poet in front of new retail and institutional investors in large numbers. We understand that announcements of customer and partner engagements are key to both institutional and retail interest, and ultimately the market value of the company. 
We plan to exhibit at the OFC conference in March in San Diego and plan to do live demonstrations to customers of our optical engines. This is an important conference for us. It's the first time we will have to meet with many customers face-to-face -face since COVID and to demonstrate fully populated, fully functional optical engines. Before OFC, we will announce exactly which products will be featured and which will be demonstrated live on site. Finally, one thing that people may not realize is that we're not DTC eligible for trading. Especially in the US, that's an important thing to have and we will have it with NASDAQ. That is the electronic platform that brokerage houses use to transfer uh, shares from one broker to another. So we haven't been on the DTC. We've used a different trading platform in Canada called DRS. So that will all now be integrated into one platform. And I think that's going to be an important step towards facilitating trading. Uh, that, that's uh, terrific. So, uh, you know, a concern existing shareholders will have is about the 10 for 1 ratio of the consolidation. As you mentioned, the company has previously said it would go to the NASDAQ in a position of strength, but the pre-consolidation share price is still currently under $1. What would you say to investors who may feel like their expectations haven't been met in that regard? Well, I think I have to go back to the first point, which is that we're making what we believe is the best move for the company. Uh, and I'd like to point out that share price is only one of the considerations when you talk about the, the coming from a position of, of strength. We want to expand our investor base and remove as many challenges to our share price as we can. We recognize that a NASDAQ listing is not a substitute for performance. We have to deliver. But let me cite a few things that I think are important to note to our shareholders. Um, we're going to the NASDAQ in a stronger position than we've ever been in. Samples are in the hands of multiple potential customers and partners, and early feedback is strongly positive, verifying the disruptive nature of the Poet Optical Interposer technology. This is a very different position than we're in now than we compared to any period of time in the past. So, you know, the share, share price is not where we'd like it to be. But there are you know, numerous factors that we don't have control over that may be a cause for that. So we're focused on the things that we can control. And one of them is to remove the uncertainties that exist around the consolidation ratio and where the share price will trade after the consolidation. Now, the world's a very volatile place now, whether it's the pandemic or inflation, whether it's uh, disruptions in the supply chain or war in Eastern Europe. We don't know what unpredictable event might occur that has nothing at all to do with the company um, and that could impact our share price. No one can predict our share price or what the market will do. So we having a consolidation ratio that boosts us above the threshold price for the uplisting is important and something that we had to consider in making this decision. You know, we're all shareholders ourselves. Um, and we have a lot invested in the success, success of Poet. But these decisions that we make are, you know, impact us as well uh, as every other shareholder in the company. They absolutely do. Uh, and, you know, reverse splits are typically looked at as a negative. You can search the internet and find lots of examples of companies that did reverse splits and fared poorly. But if you look at companies that have done reverse splits that worked, you'll probably agree that Poet fits into that mold. One company that you've heard of that did a reverse split that worked was Priceline. After its consolidation, its rise in revenue and investor interest began and its share price eventually hit $1,200 per share. Not suggesting that will happen to Poet, just providing one example of a reverse split that worked out for the company. Yeah, and you know, reverse splits are often done by companies seeking to maintain the minimum bid price requirement for continued listing on the NASDAQ, which is $1. So when a company's trading down in that range, it really attracts a lot of short sellers who drive it down farther. This happens repeatedly. And I believe that's mainly where reverse splits get their bad reputation. Yeah, very true. Uh, so Tom, last question, what is the status of customer engagements and where are the alpha and, and uh, beta samples? So the samples that we've been sending to customers and par partners are all at the alpha stage. Beta samples are totally on track. We told uh, uh, shareholders that 
And we gave them a roadmap and showed them that they would be available in this first half of the year for 100 and 200 G CWDM DM and LR4 engines and 400 G receive engines. As I said previously, the feedback on the alpha samples is extremely positive, but we are in production. We are in the process of, of building those beta, beta samples uh, in our joint venture in China. You know, our customer engagements in China, North America, and Europe continue to expand, not including our four current customer projects. There are over a dozen active discussions with customers and partners now in progress. The Superphotonics Jamen operation is building samples. They're refining the assembly and testing processes and preparing for volume production, as Suresh reported in a recent video. Well, thanks so much, Tom. Those are great updates. And thanks to the Poet community for continuing to stay involved and focused on the achievements. It's come to our attention that one of Poet's most devoted and eloquent supporters is dealing with a very difficult time right now. To the commenter named Sula Sailor, know that you're admired within the Poet team and your enduring support has been noticed and very much appreciated. You know, for any of us, we don't always get to know how we impact each other uh, and, you know, even strangers. So Robert, to you, we wanted to make sure you're aware that you've had a positive impact and your thoughtfulness has been an uplifting part of the poet journey. Take good care and our thoughts are with you and your family. Robert is a good man who has demonstrated thoughtfulness, wisdom and courage. Thanks to all listening to this video and get ready for some exciting moments to come. Cheers. NASDAQ is next. You bet.